you know, your ordinary Joe somewhere in the Midwest has got no idea whatsoever about this. And when he finally finds out that um, it's not prices going up, it's the dollar going down. By then, the dollar has lost. I mean, already since 1971, it's lost over 90 percent of its purchasing power. It'll lose another 98 percent of its purchasing power before the average Joe actually thinks, oh, well, what's going on here? I want to cut that. I just want to cut that short. I just want to, people to understand so they can protect themselves from this now accelerating debasement of paper currencies. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for January 1st through January 8th, 2024, while supplies last. First this week, we feature backdated one quarter ounce gold eagles at just $65 over melt. Next, the Armenian one ounce silver Noah's Ark coin is $3.49 over spot. And finally, we have a very limited quantity of one ounce silver Trump wanted bars at $3.15 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. You've also been doing some writing on the geopolitical situation, speaking of foreigners, and the implications that that can have on uh, well, life in various places of our globe, but also in uh, military, in financial, in inter inter country, you know, international relations, etc. Uh, what are the the uh, key areas that you're looking at from a geopolitical standpoint going into 2024? Yeah, well, I, I think 2024 is going to be a very interesting year, Donegan, because um, I would expect in the next few months um, the Ukraine situation to have some sort of resolution. And the resolution basically will be that America and her NATO partners will just give up on Ukraine. Um, we're already seeing um, uh, this beginning to start because there are reports of the head of the Ukraine army, the general in charge, is now talking to his opposite number um, uh, in, in Russia uh, with a view to ending this uh, the political class, in other words, uh, led by Zelensky, is resisting this hugely. NATO allies, ally, allies are resisting it hugely. Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, uh, they do not want to see peace in uh, the Ukraine because that, if you like, is the equivalent of Russia winning this this uh, 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 conflict. Um, but um, I'm afraid the politicians are out of the loop now. Um, this is happening between uh, the leaders of the two armies. They're negotiating the peace between them. And the, the politicians you know, have basically um, had it. You know, they're no longer they're no longer a party to this. So this is going to be settled um, uh, without the agreement of NATO and without the agreement of Zelensky. Zelensky will probably have to get on an airplane and go and find somewhere else to live. Um, Either that or it will be strung up by a lamppost somewhere. I mean, that's the sort of situation which we're rapidly coming to. Um, uh, this also, incidentally, um, has the tacit approval of Putin. And uh, you may or may not have seen that in the last two or three days, um, uh, Russian uh, missile activity has accelerated very, very substantially, attacking cities. I mean, as far um, uh, west as Lviv, uh, close to the Polish border. Uh, and all this is about putting pressure on um, the, the Ukrainians in particular to come behind their army generals um, and understand that this is something which they just need to give up. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that in the coming few months. I mean, by the end of the first quarter, I think that um, that story will be gone. Um, President Biden will have the problem <coughs> that uh, when he came in, the, one of the first his first acts was to abandon Afghanistan, which was a horrendous story. Um, and uh, one of his last acts is going to be the failure of the Ukraine. And then on top of that, of course, we've got the Israeli situation. Uh, that I think is 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 um, extremely concerning, and it's very very tricky. Um, everybody's involved in this at the moment. Very few are actually involved in the ground. Um, 
the Israelis, I, you know, I've been sort of thinking at trying to put myself in the Israelis position. Um, they will have seen the growing unity amongst the Arab nations. I mean, you've got, um, you know, uh, relationships have been restored now between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, you've got the Gulf Cooperation Council, in other words, all the states, if you like, in the Middle East and uh, in North Africa, all coming into the, the Russian uh, Chinese fold. And um, so you don't have, I mean, we've moved from the situation where America basically dominated the Middle East on a basis of divide and rule. As long as you had, you know, uh, Arabs fighting each other the whole time, uh, you know, they didn't fight you, if you see what I mean. So you could actually then control the overall situation. And it is that that has been the guarantee that the Israelis have had um, about their security uh, really for a very long time, for the last uh, 40, 50 years. Um, this American presence, the fact that the Americans dominated uh, the Middle Eastern Efforts. And this, of course, is why there's so much lobbying between Israel and uh, and um, your politicians in Washington. That has come to an end. And uh, if you put yourself in the Israelis position, you begin to sort of fear that without that power from America um, in the region, then how long can you exist as a country with all these potential enemies around you? And I suspect that that probably was a factor in uh, persuading the Israelis to try and remove Hamas from uh, Gaza. I think there was a sense of paranoia, if you like, in it. The other thing about all this is that as far as the Western media is concerned, this all started on October the 7th when Hamas um, invaded some of the uh, southern Israeli settlements and uh, killed quite a number of people, I think something like a thousand, um, uh, and uh, took host hostages. <clears throat> that wasn't the start of it at all. This is something that's been building up and building up and building up. And then finally, um, uh, just before um, Hamas started, uh, um, you know, taking, taking uh, hostages, um, there was a problem uh, at uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the third holiest um, uh, uh, mosque in in the whole of uh, the you know the Muslim world, and so this was very very important. So you know we're, we're tying in um, uh, almost generations of um, uh, you know Israelis taking over um, traditional Arab lands, Palestinian lands, and then attacking their mosque. So. You know, it was it was that that, as, as much as anything, actually triggered this whole thing. It wasn't just Hamas; it was the way in which the Israeli government was, not, you know, if you like, allowing its own citizens to um, take uh, property away from uh, the Palestinians in the form of land, in the form of um, settlements, and so on and so forth, and then this religious attack. Now, the whole of the Muslim world knows this. We're talking about two billion people. This is more than a quarter of the world's population who are effectively on the side of the Palestinians. And this is why, um, uh, you know, we've got riots in our streets because we've got large Muslim populations who see this completely differently from our media. Um, <clears throat> this brings us to the role of the Houthis. Now, the Houthis basically um, were a bunch, if you really like, of hill tribesmen originally backed by um, uh, Iran uh, in a fight. Uh, well, basically, firstly, to gain control over the Yemen, and then secondly, uh, to fight against um, uh, Saudi Arabia, who backed the previous the previous lot. Um, but since Iran and Saudi Arabia have um, all become lovey dovey and exchanged ambassadors and <laughs> all the rest of it, um, you know, that has changed. So you do have a situation where you've got these fighters, if you like, freedom fighters, terrorists, whatever you like to call them, you know, with nothing to do. So, <laughs> you know, 
they i think what's happened is that iran very quietly has found a new role for them and that is instead of iran you know threatening to close off hormuz they've closed off the bab el manab straits into the red sea not effectively closed it but um you know if you're going to go through there you've got to expect um uh, you know drones and you know dropping nasty things on you and this has been very very effective and in fact it's so effective that um in, in terms of nato this new operation uh being masterminded by the american navy um you know nato partners have been dropping out uh, <laughs> france has said no way italy has said no way and spain has said no way why they've got large muslim populations <laughs> they don't want you know they've got enough trouble back at home as it is without getting involved in that one and i can just see this escalating and i think that um <clears throat> from the iranian point of view what they want to do is they want to put pressure on uh, israel to stop its action in gaza and um uh, uh the only way in which that can be done is for the americans to lean on netanyahu and say look you've got to stop doing this because otherwise um you know we're going to just have to come out against you you know that's that as far as the iranians is concerned is the objective meanwhile the objective as far as uh, israel is concerned um is to get the americans actually involved maybe um invade syria again um close off that bridge if you like across from the top of of israel the northern end of israel whereby hezbollah is supplied from uh, iran but the americans are not going to play ball i mean they're in a very difficult position on this um meanwhile the whole thing is effectively being masterminded right right at the top because who is now backing iran who is now backing saudi arabia it's the russia chinese axis we're talking about energy in particular so this is particular you know it's 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 out of china and russia it is russia that is on the front foot here it is basically controlling as i see it controlling the evolution of this problem in the middle east by effectively working with iran to make life as difficult as possible for the americans and to end up with a conclusion whereby the americans have to back out so that in 2024 we've got them defeated in the ukraine we've got them expelled from the middle east that is the dream if you like of president putin and i think that that is the thing that we've got to understand this is a far bigger picture than just gaza i mean it is an an immense immensely large picture the houthi thing i think has only just started i think that's going to get worse and worse and worse and yes container ships and 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 oil tankers are just going to have to go around the cape it's going to add 5 weeks delivering stuff from uh, the far east uh, into into europe this is um this is i think the main geopolitical thing now i haven't said anything yet about brics russia becomes president of brics or became president of brics on january the 1st this is january the 2nd so they've been in that position for one day um looking at president putin's speech um about brics which he delivered on new year's day he says that there are now 200 or i think it was over 200 brics meetings planned in russia um during their presidency now this is roughly 5 every week he has already mapped out um if you like a very very detailed strategy for uh enhancing brics for growing brics um and i think importantly having failed to to get the idea of a brics trade settlement currency on the agenda in johannesburg uh this time when uh, the final meeting of the presidency which is in october um when that happens i think that um he will have already managed to work out a plan which will be passed by brics and incidentally there are something like 30 odd um uh countries queuing up to join brics so we are likely to see uh on uh january the 1st 2025 quite a number of other countries 
joining in BRICS. Um, we're now looking at, um, you know, substantially, and if you put together BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which could well be merged in time with, um, you know, the two things could be merged in time quite, quite easily. Uh, we're looking at um, over 60% of world GDP. We're looking at, um, I can't remember the exact figures, but it's certainly well over 60% of global population. I think it's probably closer to 70. So in other words, you know, us guys in the West thinking we rule the world, you know, suddenly we find ourselves horribly outnumbered. That is going to become so much more apparent, uh, I think, in 2024. And that trade settlement currency will be based on gold. Um, I think the way it is going to work is that instead of using the dollar as the stepping stone between uh, trade in two different currencies, because the way it works is importer buys something. OK, he's got to pay for it. The first thing he does is he sells his own currency, buys dollars. <clears throat> and then if um, the person, you know, his counterparty on the other side doesn't want dollars, he's got to sell the dollars, buy the counterparty's currency and credit the counterparty's bank account. So in other words, the dollar, you know, it's currency, dollar, currency. I think what um, uh, what uh, the Russians will do is they will change that to currency, gold, currency. Because they want to cut out the dollar. That's the important thing. Uh, and, um, you know, if it's if it's currency, gold, currency, they've got far greater control over over um, uh, uh, events out of, over. And also, um, you won't find reflected in bank accounts, uh, you know, dollar bank accounts, uh, the changes in ownership um, of, of dollar credit, if you like, which is something uh, which I think that uh, the intelligence uh, community in America see as being one of the most valuable things about dollar hegemony. They know exactly where all, you know, it's all going, all gone um, and so on. That is, of course, with the exception of dollars being created outside the U.S. banking system, which actually is the majority of dollars. But anyway, that's another story. So I think that's where uh, that's that's going to be, I think, the bombshell, if you like, in, in uh, 2024. Well, one of many. <laughs> one of many, it sounds like. And for people who want to follow your prolific writing on a regular basis, you've started a new Substack channel where people can get connected in. Can you tell us how to do that? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, um, I've set up a new Substack channel. It's um, This is uh, only just starting. Um, I haven't posted anything on it yet, uh, um, but that will um, change over the course of this month. I'll start posting. The channel is McLeod Finance, um, and you'll find that McLeod Finance at Substack. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you a link so that you can post that if uh, if you'd be kind enough to do so. Um, and I, I, I will still be writing for gold money. But from February the 1st, um, my long form articles will move from gold money onto my sub stack. Um, so, I mean, the, what I'm trying to achieve with this is to educate people about the difference between money and credit. And we're talking about um, a constituency which generally has assets to protect and doesn't realize that those assets are pure credit. And um, they've got to try and understand what the consequences are of having those assets in credit and um, maybe nothing in money. So, you know, in these deteriorating times, I think this is a very, very important lesson for everybody to really understand. And I, you know, I personally find when I talk to people um, here, uh, you know, they just don't get it. It's very, very hard to understand that um, it's not the gold price going up, as we were discussing earlier, but it's the value of, um, you know, the purchasing power of your currency going down. That is, it's such a difficult message to get people to understand. And it's interesting because the, the great uh, Austrian economist um, uh, in his writings made the point um, that, uh, um, you know, foreigners uh, latch onto this first. And the last people to latch onto it are the pe users of the currency. You know, in other words, uh, you, know, your old, you, you know, your ordinary Joe somewhere in the Midwest has got no idea whatsoever about this. And when he finally finds out that um, it's not prices going up, it's the dollar going down, by then the dollar has lost. I mean, already since... Um, at 1971, it's lost over 90% of its purchasing power. 
it'll lose another 98 percent of its purchasing power before the average joe actually thinks oh, what's going on here i want to cut that i just want to cut that short i just want to people to understand so they can protect themselves from this now accelerating debasement of paper currencies and that is the purpose if you like of my new Substack. Well, Alistair, we are grateful for your presence here always. We'll put the link to your Substack in the description of this video. And uh, people, you've got to avail yourselves of that because we've got to get the word out. As far as preparedness for clear and present dangers to all of our families, earnings, savings, retirements, those that we love, and our families' futures, people need to understand this before it's too late. Alistair, thank you for joining us again on Liberty and Finance. That's very much my pleasure, Donegan. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for January 1st through January 8th, 2024, while supplies last. First this week, we feature backdated one quarter ounce gold eagles at just $65 over melt. Next, the Armenian one ounce silver Noah's Ark coin is $3.49 over spot. And finally, we have a very limited quantity of one ounce silver Trump wanted bars at $3.15 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.